This week on Capital City Sports, women's volleyball takes on Tennessee and Auburn. Women's soccer takes on Vanderbilt. We covered the Garden and Black World Series, and we were at the tip-off tailgate at the Coliseum. This is Capital City Sports. Welcome to Capital City Sports. I'm Jake Barber. We'll kick off this show with the 13th ranked women's soccer team as they took on Vanderbilt on a chilly Friday night in Stone Stadium. We'll send it out to Kelly Wiley with the highlights. I'm here at Stone Stadium where the USC women's soccer team has just defeated the Vanderbilt Commodores 4-1. The Gamecocks dominated the first half and came out with the win with the help of Gamecock season leaders Deja Griffin, Taylor Leach, and Raina Johnson. In the first minute of the game, the Gamecocks are awarded a corner kick and make the Commodores pay. Chelsea Drennan takes the kick and finds Taylor Leach, who is there to head the ball into the back of the net for a 1-0 lead. The Gamecocks wouldn't wait much longer to tack on another goal. In the 11th minute, Raina Johnson would find the back of the net to give the Gamecocks a 2-0 lead. Just three minutes later, Gabrielle Gilbert gets in on the action. Once again, Chelsea Drennan finds Gilbert streaking towards the net with a low cross and Gilbert would do the rest from there, giving the Gamecocks a 3-0 lead. The Gamecocks had multiple opportunities to strike again in the first half, including the strike from outside the box. Still, they dominated the first half, outshooting the Commodores 15-1. While amassing six corner kicks to Vanderbilt 0, the Gamecocks took a 3-0 lead in the half. Coming out the locker room, the Gamecocks didn't let up. Daniel Al finds Raina Johnson, who puts the ball into the back of the net, her team leading 7 4 this season giving the Gamecocks a 4-0 lead. The Commodores would avoid the shutout, though. Chayna Williams dribbles the ball the length of the field, streaking past Gamecock defenders, and finishes beautifully with the strike of her own to put Vanderbilt on the scoreboard. Unfortunately, it wasn't enough as the Gamecocks took this one from the Commodores 4-1. The USC women's soccer team will travel to Starkville, Mississippi this Sunday to take on the Mississippi State Bulldogs. With Capital City Sports, I'm Kelly Wiley. Thanks, Kelly. On Saturday, Frank Martin and Don Staley hosted the tip-off tailgate at Colonial Life. Austin Lewis is there, and we'll send it to him for some more information. The South Carolina Athletic Department puts together the first ever Gamecock basketball tip-off, giving fans and students the opportunity to see their 2013-2014 men's and women's basketball teams in action before the season starts in November. On Saturday, over 3,200 fans filed into Colonial Life Arena to check out the future of Gamecock basketball. The tip-off consisted of events that involved players from both teams, including a three-point contest, which was won by Retro sophomore Tina Roy. The students got involved in Coach Don Staley's Let's Make a Deal, but nobody could make a shot as the students lost out on a series of prizes. The women would tip off the action with their scrimmage against the practice squad. Coach Dawn Staley gives her thoughts on the tip-off and the season ahead. I think basketball is basketball, no matter how you look at it. I know, you know, both Frank and I are trying to get our teams to a point where, you know, it is something that people want to see uh, right here. Um, hopefully the, the students, you know, I think there is a buzz around the, the city that, you know, people want to see us play. We just have to get people in the stands and, and, and continue to put a product on the floor that they can, you know, spend their money and also feel good about. Um, cheering us on. The men came out next and were running up and down the floor, lighting it up for the crowd.
Coach Frank Martin is excited about the turnout at the tip-off event. Oh, it's awesome. I, we had 3,000 students in here. You know, that's what it's all about. It's, uh, we, we, you know, this, this is for the fans tonight and allow the fans and our players to, to kind of enjoy the moment. And, you know, we're on our players hard to do things a certain way and compete and, and take ownership. And, and they're trying, uh, but, but they got to enjoy the moment. When we get in front of our fans, you got you to have fun, and that's what it's all about. Coaches Martin and Staley are sharing the process of building a program at South Carolina. Don's a championship player, coach. I mean, she demands that her players play a certain way. Uh, I, I love being around people that are like that. We, we learn from each other. I go to her practices, she come to our practices, and it's, uh, uh, it's great to, to be able to share this moment with her and her team. The next time you'll be able to see your basketball teams in action is November 1st for the women against North Greenville, and November 3rd for the men against USC Aiken. At Colonial Life Arena, I'm Austin Lewis, Capital City Sports. This weekend, the women's volleyball team hosted Tennessee for their annual Dig Pink game to support breast cancer awareness. For a closer look, we'll send it to Jeremy Urso. This past Sunday, the South Carolina Gamecocks took on the Tennessee Volunteers, hoping to get revenge from the football team's loss two weeks ago. Going into the game, the Tennessee Volunteers did not have a single conference win, so it looked to be like a decisive victory for the Gamecocks. Will this prove to be true? Let's take a look at the highlight. The Gamecocks got off to a good start as Tennessee serves the ball long. And then number four, Darian Dozer, comes up with the monstrous kill. However, that early lead would not last for long as the Volunteers come up with a powerful kill of their own and then get another point later in the game with a USC foul block attempt. USC would lose the first game 25 to 19. The second game would not turn out any differently after number eight is unable to make the return. South Carolina falls in the second game 25 to 18. The Gamecocks would try and make one final stand in the third game when they spike the ball between two defenders in the backfield to get the point. However, this would not be enough to mount a comeback as there seems to be some miscommunication when no one makes contact with the ball in midair, resulting in the game-winning point for Tennessee. The Gamecocks fall to Tennessee, zero games to three. The Gamecocks also lost to Auburn three games to zero this past Sunday. However, senior Juliette DeVenon recorded her 1,500th kill. Next up, the Gamecocks take on Coastal Carolina University in hopes of finishing out the rest of their season on a good note. On behalf of Capital City Sports, I'm Jeremy Urso. Get excited, folks. Baseball season is right around the corner. This weekend, the baseball team hosted the Garnet and Black World Series. Pat Cloney has the highlight. The Garnet and Black World Series took place here at Carolina Stadium to close out fall practice over the weekend. Coach Chad Holbrook and the baseball coaching staff picked sides for a three-game set. For your first look at the 2014 Gamecock baseball team, let's take a look at the weekend wrap-up. That's right, Gamecock baseball fans. The season is just around the corner, and we were able to get our first look at what the Gamecock baseball team might look like this year as Chad Holbrook and the gang hosted a little inner squad scrimmage over the weekend. Now with Joey Pancake expected to move to the outfield this year, one player to take a look at is Marcus Mooney. Yes, that's the brother of Peter Mooney, and he looked solid defensively all weekend. Backing up Grayson Grinder behind the plate will be Logan Koch. Check out this throw to nail the runner trying to steal second. And competing for an open spot at third base, this is Elliot Caldwell with the single up the middle. That would score Tanner English. And speaking of Tanner English, he was one of the many returning Gamecocks to have a solid weekend. Here he ropes the RBI double into right center field. Then later, check out Joey Pancake with the single into left off the submarine pitcher. And here it's second baseman Max Schrock with the single into right. And finally, it's the big fly of the weekend. Off the bat of Kyle Martin, way out of here into right field. Look for Martin to take over the power spot in the lineup left by the departure of LB Dantzler. But the story of the weekend was this new look Gamecock pitching staff. Here, Evan Beal gets the strikeout. Look for him to compete for that Sunday spot in the starting rotation. And we got our first look at highly anticipated prospect Will Crow. He strikes out Tanner English here. Then finally, check out Taylor Widener. He had quite the game on Sunday. Here, he strikes out Elliot Caldwell to end the inning. 
and then later Widener doing work at the plate. Here he drives the ball to deep left. It goes off the wall for a double, scoring a run. However, the Garnet team was unimpressed. They took the Garnet and Black World Series three games to none. Now the next time we'll see the Carolina baseball team will be on February 14th when the Gamecocks open up the season right here against Bucknell. Now at that time, there will be two national championship trophies on display, in this case right behind me. And this year's Carolina baseball team will hope to add a third. From Carolina Stadium, I'm Pat Cloney, Capital City Sports. Thanks, Pat. The women's volleyball team was in action again against Auburn, where one of our players was hoping to reach a big milestone. Nick Jones has the scoop. We were at the volleyball game Sunday as the Lady Gamecocks took on the Auburn Tigers. They lost to the Tennessee Volunteers Friday night in three sets. Will they take home the victory? Let's send it to Stan Smith with the action. Sunday's matchup between the Auburn Tigers and Lady Gamecocks pit two teams that are both trying to jockey for better position in the SEC standings. South Carolina was able to get an early lead in the first set, but the Lady Tigers capitalized off of errors from the Lady Gamecocks to ultimately take the first set 25 to 22. The Lady Gamecocks were able to make exciting plays such as this block made by Jackie Angermiller. The second set had a similar story with South Carolina jumping out to an early lead, but Auburn took the lead back and held on to win the set by the same score of 25 to 22. In the third set, senior outside hitter Juliette Thevenin surpassed a milestone recording her 1500th career kill. Unfortunately, the Lady Gamecocks could not come up with a W, losing in straight sets. Now back to you, Nick. Thanks, Stan. The Lady Gamecocks will take on Coastal Carolina this Wednesday at 6 p.m. here in Columbia. With Capital City Sports, this is Nick Jones. Well, that'll do it for us this week. If you want to catch this episode again, you can log on to sgtv.sc.edu. Be sure to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at CCS on SGTV. I'm Jake Barber for Capital City Sports. You stay cocky, Columbia.